Hey everyone, this is a continuation of the uh, first video uh, about the uh, workout plan. The next day you're going to want to do shoulders. Uh, what you're going to start off with is dumbbell shoulder press. You're going to want to do six sets of that. So you're going to get in your seat, you're going to put the platform all the way up. Um, some benches don't really go up to 90, but you don't really need that. You just want to make sure you engage the front muscle uh, so that when you're doing like the front bicep um, pose, that you have a nice broad shoulder to show. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be uh, leaning back. Make sure your butt and back are against the chair. If you're arching your back too much um, and having a big gap, that's not very good posture. You could hurt your back and you're not really engaging the muscles properly. So what you're going to want to do is have your back flat and you're going to push up and you're going to do about 8 to 10 reps. You're going to do about 6 sets of that. No, exactly six. And you want to start off low and you want to go up every single time. You should be really struggling with that last set. Uh, don't be uh, discouraged if you can't get all of your reps on your last set. As long as you're increasing the weight, you will start to get better as, as the weeks go by. Uh, next, you're wanna, gonna wanna grab a lower weight. Uh, you could start with five pounds. Lots of people uh, start off with like 10 or 15. Uh, you're going to want to increase though. This is uh, side raises. So you're going to be having uh, the dumbbells at your side and you're going to want to have a slight lean forward so you can engage the back muscles um, by your shoulder and you're going to raise both your arms at the same time and you can feel uh, the uh, front shoulder and the rear shoulder muscles, um, deltoids I believe, tightening when you when you make those raises. So you're going to want to have uh, same thing. Uh, 8 to 10 reps should be good, maybe even 12 if you're feeling lucky. Um, and you want to increase that uh, four times for, for four different sets. Then next, to have nice good shoulders, you're going to want to uh, fill in your, tra uh, your traps. Now this is one exercise that I've uh, always done with more than the traditional 8 to 10 or 12 reps. Um, I, I usually do 20. I usually, uh, when I first started working out, I would grab the 45 pound plates. Uh, and just uh, basically uh, lean forward and pull the weight up using your, your traps. Uh, you're you're going to want to have your elbows locked out, but not uh, le not fully because you don't want to damage your um, elbows, like hyperextending them. So you're going to want to like have a slight uh, like a slight bend, but make it firm. Don't like just let it loose and like you're going to end up pulling. You're going to be engaging biceps, and you really want to concentrate on the the traps for this exercise. So you're going to want to do your shrugs. You want to do about 20 reps with your 45 pound weights uh, for three sets. Um, and that should definitely give you a little burn. And you should have about five minutes uh, extra time left over after you've done all those exercises. Uh, and you should be doing high intensity cardio with that remaining time. Get a sweat going. Um, if you feel like it, uh, I've heard that it could be beneficial to do cardio before heavy weight lifting. But uh, I, I think it's different for everyone, and you should definitely figure out what works best for your body. Um, I know that I'm exhausted if I uh, put too much effort into my run and then my lifts aren't as good. Um, who's to say that I'm not tearing even more muscle because I'm fatigued? But I feel like the low energy causes me to not be able to lift as well as I would if I had done the cardio after. So that's why I always do cardio last because I feel like you can always push yourself to run away from something if you're running away from something. But you can always push yourself to run if if you need to. I mean, you are engaging your whole body for, for that type of cardio, but you don't need to do running. You can do elliptical or you can do jumping jacks or whatever. You just want to have high-intensity cardio, about five minutes, get that heart rate up, work a sweat. The day after that is leg day. This is an important day. They say don't ever let uh, your friends skip leg day because this is very important. Your legs are basically the, the biggest group of muscles in your body, like your glutes, biggest muscle, uh, your, uh, your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your calves. They're all very important because uh, we use our legs to walk. They're for our support. And when you work your legs, you're releasing a beautiful testosterone uh, so that your body can use it for other things. And you're also strengthening your core. If you don't have a strong core for these exercises, you might want to get a belt. I've never used a belt. I mean, don't overdo it. Don't get weights that are too heavy for you and you won't need a belt. I mean, you should be able to use your core to hold up 
the weight. I've never used a belt. I mean, well, I've tried them, but it's it's silly. I don't use belts, and I'm I'm squatting over 300 and deadlifting almost 400. So you don't need that garbage. Um, so you're gonna want to do about six sets of squats. That, that's what I do at least. Um, I sometimes do eight. Uh, and um, I guess I'll show you the proper form for a squat. Uh, you're gonna want to stand up, get your bar on your back. Uh, and you're going to want to go uh, feet about shoulder width apart. You're going to want to go down. Keep your back as straight as possible. You want your thighs to be parallel with the ground. Then you're going to come back up. And that's one. Here's a little side view. I don't know if you can see very well. You want to come down. Your butt goes out. And then you push back up. All right. Uh, you're going to want to do six sets of that increasing. Um, on a regular leg day, I usually start off with 135, then go up to 155, adding the 10s on, taking the 10s off, adding 25s on for 185, taking those off, putting on uh, another plate, so that's 225, then going up to 245, then 275, and then ending off at 315. But by the 315, I'm not getting 10 reps, so it's going to taper off. You're going to be getting... Um, you should be getting around like less than less than five reps on your last one. You're going to be really pushing, and uh, that that's a lot of squats. Like that's not what people usually do. They usually do isolating exercises like leg lifts and leg curls. But uh, I've read that those aren't really good. You're going to want um, uh, exercises that engage multiple muscle groups uh, for for leg exercises because the knees are very important. And you don't want to put that type of uh, specific targeted strain on them. Squats are a bit more natural, and it's it's a very important exercise. Probably one of the most important exercises that you're going to do. So after your six, six sets of squats, you're going to want to do deadlifts. Um, I guess I better show you this one too. Uh, deadlifts, you're not going to want to do 8 to 10 reps. Um, it's better if you just do 5. Really concentrate on your form. This is where people get hurt. I had a friend get uh, mess up a deadlift, and he was out for a month. And he was only doing 225. So you're going to want to start low and then add your weight on there. Um, so deadlift, you're going to want to have your legs um, same distance as before for squats. And you're going to want to have the bar. Uh, I like to use a cross grip because it's better for me to, to hold it. Some people do, do both overhand. Some people do it the opposite way. I, I don't understand this way. I, I like this way, um, left hand over. But it depends on your preference. Uh, you're going to want to have the weight on the ground. Uh, you probably know how to do a deadlift, so I'm just saying this for everybody. Uh, you're going to have the barbell on the ground, and you're just going to have your weight on there. You're going to grab it like this, and you're going to be in a squat position. You're, you're going to also want to keep your back straight for this exercise as well. This is where you can get your back damaged. That's why people wear belts for deadlifts and squats, because if you're arching over, you're going to really hurt your lower back. You want to keep that taut and, and straight. So you're going to push up with your legs. And as it gets over your knees, you're going to want to start flexing your gluteus maximus and pulling the bar up like this. And that's one deadlift. Then you're going to want to slowly pull it down, engage those muscles the entire time, and then do the same thing over again. You want to do that about five reps. Um, if you have time after that, which you probably shouldn't, th these, leg, these heavy leg exercises, they take a little bit more out of you, so you should be giving yourself a little bit more time to rest. If you do have more time, then I suggest lunges. I don't really do them because I don't really have the balance for it. I could work on it and get better at them, but I mean, those are a very good exercise for you to be able to do. But that's if you have time. Squats and deadlifts are extremely important. Um, that's why they're in the they're, they're uh, the two out of the three exercises for getting in the thousand pound club. All right, last day is um, arms. Uh, this video is getting kind of long. You're going to want to do uh, three sets of skull crushers. So you're going to take your weight and you're going to lay down on a bench. And they're called skull crushers because uh, you're having the, uh, the, the tinier, like the curling bar with the weight on the ends. You're, you're basically flat on the bench, on your back. You're bringing it towards your face. So, and if you drop it, you're going to crush your skull. So you're going to not want to drop it. So either have a spotter or don't do weight that you know you can't do. You're going to want to keep your elbows in and then push out. And you're going to want to tighten your triceps at the top. You're going to want to keep it uh, perpendicular with the ground so that you're, like, you're, you're getting maximum, um, maximum force uh, or maximum torque, basically. Um, 
on your uh, on your triceps so that they're feeling the most. Then you're gonna want to switch to arms real quick. Do some bicep curls. You're gonna want to do uh, three sets of that. Three sets of skull crushers, by the way, if I, if I forgot to say that. Um, you know, just increase the weight. Everyone knows how to do curls. Then you're going to want to do dips. Um, you're going to want to do four sets of dips. If you can't do your body weight, then just go uh, to the same machine that they have the, the, the pull-up bar with the platform. You can use that machine uh, for dips as well. They usually have uh, dip um, handles. You're going to want to grab there. You're going to push up. That's also going to be working uh, your lower chest. Um, which is nice because in this program you don't really do decline uh, bench press or anything like that. So that, that's where you're getting your lower chest and it also kind of tightens lats as well depending on how you do it. You're going to want to do four sets of that. Then you want to go back to arms and do hammer curls. Hammer curls are just like regular curls except you're going to have your hand as if you're hammering something. And this is going to help extenuate the uh, actual bicep basically uh, filling in this gap because lots of people have these this just ball up here for their bicep. To get that stretched out form, you're going to want to include uh, um, hammer curls in your exercises. You want to do three uh, medium to heavy uh, sets of those, uh, about eight to ten reps again, and then finally uh, you're finishing it off with five minutes of high intensity cardio. Um, all right, that's it. Uh, hope you took notes. I will see you tomorrow.